Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I'm going to be swatching out my new paints, which are from Daniel Smith. And I am going to put them into one of my empty half pan palettes. This is the full palette. And I purchased this with the hand poured paints inside. So these are half pans and it came with a bonus tin so it's a free metal box and 24 empty half pans. Now I have been gradually filling this up and I'm going to change them out today because I have some tube paints I want to squeeze into these empty palettes and I'll show you how I do that right now. So these are metallic paints that I purchased. Uh, they're professional metallic paints I purchased on Amazon. I can't remember where they're from, but um, they're beautiful colors. I particularly like the gold. They've got a glitter in them. I have my Payne's Grey, which is Winsor & Newton, so that's coming out of this palette. And I'll just show you how to do this. Let's pull this right out. And you can take your pans out like this. Just pop that out. And this is Winsor & Newton, Payne's Grey, Cobalt Turquoise Light and Opera Rose. So I want my Winsor & Newton paints to go in my Winsor & Newton palette. So I'll be removing those, which means I have some room for some more palettes here. And this is the case that my metallic pattern palettes came in. It's an opportunity for me to do some spring cleaning here. It is spring in Sydney and it's a beautiful day. I've just been swimming in the pool and it's glorious temperatures here and um, it's been really a lovely time of year. Okay, so here's our palettes set up, ready to go. And I'm going to bring out my new colors, show you what my new colors are that are going in with my 24 half pans that I already have and see what we get. Okay, so these came from Eckersley's just show you that on the front here. Eckersley's Art and Craft is a very large art store chain in Australia and we have a local store but they didn't have any Daniel Smith paints at all in the local store but I was told I could order them online through their city store so this is where my paints have come from. I'm just going to open this now. So these are the colours that I chose to add to my palette. Now these are the colours that I already have. You may have seen this palette before. I'm going to swatch these out today with some washi tape onto another page, similar to what I've done here with this combination here, but in smaller squares to match. So I'm going to do that now. Look at these lovely paints. Wowee, look at that. Oh, I'm very excited to get my hands on these and start playing. I just love these Daniel Smith paints. 14 new colours. Now, the other thing I purchased from Kmart were a couple of these small storage boxes. And I already had in mind that these would fit my tubes nicely. They're the perfect size. They were $2.50 each. And I love when I get something like this, the first thing I like to do is to peel off the sticker so that I don't have that residue left. As soon as I get something, if I can peel the sticker off, I'm, ha I'm a happy girl. Also means that I can see what's in my box. Here's a little tip that I use in my swatch book. This is a handbook. This is a hand journal that I like to swatch in. I can carefully cut between the two rings. And I might have, you might have seen me do this before with these books. It's one of the reasons I love ring binder books. Especially for things like swatches. For a sketchbook, I like one that's sewn in and then I can you know, keep a whole portfolio of sketches in. But for swatching, these are brilliant. I just cut like this. It doesn't take long at all. It's quite quick just to cut through between the two. And what this allows me to do is to take it out. I can work flat on it if I want to, 
or I can put it in a different part of my journal. So in this art journal, I use it mainly for swatching, color mixing, and testing out paints. Now here's what you do, you very gently pull your pages out, piece by piece, like this, coax them with your finger. And then I can move this now to anywhere I want to in the book. So my plan is to put this right on the opposite page here of my other Daniel Smith colors. So I can open it out like this and I'll have my palettes easily readable. So this is a great tip that I picked up a long time ago when I first started using these books because um, there's a couple of reasons I like them. You can just rip any page out that you're not happy with and it doesn't mar the book. Or you can move pages around just by doing that and you can see how I've now locked them back into place and they're, they're quite sturdy in there. They're not going to go anywhere. So this is now where I'm going to be doing the rest of my Daniel Smith swatching to match this one. Now there's two ways I can do this. I'm actually thinking I'm going to keep it running this way. So I think we'll go in that same direction. And what I do is I use very thin washi tape. So this is the thickness, it's about one eighth of an inch and I'm going to grid up this page here to match. It's quite simple and it's quite fast. So the first thing you want to do is to provide a line at the bottom so you get a neat finish at the bottom. You want to get roughly in the center and I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing here. This is going to look really neat and professional. Let's get it nice and straight. Pop that in. This one's about here, so that's an easy reference point. Pop that one in. So I go right off to the edge as well, and I grid that off too. Now I love making swatches. I think it's a great way to play with your new material. I think it is a lot of fun. Now what I want to do is just tuck these around the corners just so they don't fold up on me and I'll peel these all off when I'm finished. This is a size 6. So we're going to start with the pillars and shimmer first. I'm going to squeeze it in. And I'm going to take that piece there and put the lid straight back on. So that's my pearlescent shimmer. Now you won't see much colour because this is just a shimmer that goes in with the paints and gives that shimmery effect. So it's almost colourless I would say. Try and bring that up and show you in the camera there. If it can pick that up, there is a shimmery effect in this square here. So it is a shimmery paint, it's lovely. I'll just add a little bit more so you can see a bit more. And that will add shimmer to any colour that you use, and I think it's a really handy one to have. So I'm going to pop indigo in there next. Anyway, we don't want any of that shimmer in there, so I'm going to really wash that out because I don't want my paints to look shimmery. I'm going to pick the paint up off the top of the tube there, and I'm going to wipe it around with my brush because any paint that sits there, next time you go to open your paint, you won't be able to open the lid. This is why I like doing this all at the same time so that I know that my paints, they're secure. So this is Indigo. And I don't actually have an indigo in any of my paints. Um, this is the darkest blue I've ever owned and it is luscious. Look at that. And it's really strong. Look at the pigment in that. Clean water, wipe it off. All right, now we're coming in with, this is Mayan Blue Genuine. was a cleaner pour. I didn't squeeze so hard on that one. 
make sure that the lead is on completely straight. My and blue genuine. Oops, too much. This is why you need to let your half pans dry overnight because you'll be pulling out way too much paint from the pans. That's another reason I like half pans. I think there's a lot less wastage by using half pans or full pans in a palette because you're not squeezing out paint as you can see. Look at that beautiful color. That's a gorgeous denim color. I really like that a lot. This one is Moon Glow. I hear lovely things about Moon Glow. I've got quite a few blues here, a few dark blues. I don't really have any dark blues other than Ultramarine um, in my other sets. And I think that's why um, I was drawn to more blues in this set. All right, I'm scraping it across with a just damp brush and then cleaning it off with a tissue so that the next time I open this, I don't have to get a pair of pliers to open the paint because I've mistreated my tubes. Okay, so there's Moon Glow. Okay, so I have some on my brush directly from the tube. I'm going to scrape it on there and just add a touch of water. That is really lovely. Really lovely purpley colour. Okay, that's Moon Glow. Right, next we have Imperial Purple. I wanted a really nice deep purple. Damp, clean brush. Let me clean it up a bit. I come off it damp. Touch it to the top. Clean up any edges that you can. That's nice and clean. Put the cap back on. Imperial purple. A little bit of water. As we're only working with a damp brush before, the water will release that pigment onto the paper. Lovely. Rose of Ultramarine. Okay, let's try this one. I'm going to clean up the top, both sides of the brush like that. And that's spotless for the lid to go back on the tube. So what happens if, worst happens, and you can't get into your tube of paint? Well, you can cut into the tube, worst, worst case scenario. I wouldn't like to do that though, it just seems like such a waste of very expensive materials. And you're not caring for your work that way either like to be caring for my work right that is beautiful look at that it's it's a pinky purple wow very very nice so that's rose of ultramarine now we're going in with shadow violet Have a little bit too much on my brush I'm just going to put some in my palette there and I'm going to scrape that little bit back in so it's nice and tidy there we go right let's have a look at shadow violet oh this is a purpley gray but just the tiniest shadow of a purple in the gray it's beautiful very delicate color Next is Lavender. Okay, 
It's a boat going past with some really nice music. There's a lot of boats on the water today. So if you're hearing that music, that's what it is. Okay, so we've got our um, lavender. Duochrome turquoise. So this is duochrome turquoise. Okay. And this is really ready to jump out of the tube at me. I haven't even squeezed it and it's already wanting to pop out. But that's okay. We can we can wrangle it. Another duochrome, Oceanic. Duochrome colours are one pigment that bounces between two colours and it has a beautiful shimmery finish. It's quite shiny and shimmery. And duochrome colours are part of the Luminescence series by Daniel Smith. So the next colour is green gold, and it is. It's a lovely golden colour. This is a great colour if you use lemon yellow as an underpainting with leaves. This would be a good underpainting colour if you're going with very dark leaves and you don't want a huge contrast of the lemon yellow. This is a beautiful shade. Wow, look at the um, strength of this pigment. It's lovely. It's like a golden green. It's got a, it does have that golden glow to it underneath. It's really gorgeous. I have Aussie red gold, which is the next one, which I think will be fabulous in some of my landscapes that I'm doing at the moment. And it is a beautiful earth colour, a colour that we see a lot in the outback in Australia. Oh, nice. I can see these two colours are going to really complement each other perfectly. Let's have a try of the Aussie Red Gold. Aussie Red Gold. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Love that. That really against the green gold, wow. We have Potter's Pink. And this was a colour that I've been looking for for quite a while. I think it's going to be very, very useful. It's a lovely colour. You'll see when I put it down. It's not really something that's easy to mix, this one. So it's one of those that you want to be sure that you have a nice pink. This is the way to do it. So I'm going to grab that from around the edge. see what happens with pigment it's a pale pink it's lovely a blush color a blush pink it's beautiful it's really soft it's going to be perfect for modern florals I just put a dot of water on there I don't know why, how, where that came from And last is Lunar Black. This is very heavily granulating and it does some really fun things. So let's see what we've got with Lunar Black. Let's 
let's add the water for the magic. See what happens. And that is lovely. Look at that. That is granulating beautifully. Just really breaking up. Heavily granulating. I'd call this a super granulating colour. Beautiful. Oh, look at this granulation coming in in this. Wow. That is the most granulating of all the colours. Very nice. So with the palette swatching, I'm going to copy the tin idea. This gives you an idea of the size you need to cut. I love this because you can, you can actually <laughs> dig into it and get your colours out again. So you're not wasting any colours. Um, so what I want to do is I want to have the same sort of thing here, but I'll have to do it in watercolour paper. I can run it through my laminator. That would be wonderful if I did that. I'm definitely going to do that. So I'm just going to get a scrap of watercolour paper that's sitting here in my scrap collection. So if I cut it to this size, look at that. Did I pick well? I think I picked really well. Okay, I'm going to cut that down with some scissors so that it fits pretty easy. And I will laminate it once I've made it. I'll run it through my laminator and it will be just like this. So I'm going to speed this next part up. I drew some lines with a pencil and ruler so that they would be the same size as the half pans. I'm filling them all in. I even managed to fill in the metallic paints as well. And I'll pop some music on. And if you're enjoying this video and you're getting something out of it, consider giving me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Enjoy.